first of all, I would define my music on like a technical level, but also at the same time, I would define my music, of course, in terms of aesthetics and uh, eventually even music. So there's always these two levels to define my music, we, uh, which co co constantly correspond. There's always like a correspondence between like the aesthetic side of what I do and the like technical distinctions on what on which my music is based. So there's always like a clear cut uh, correspondence between technical aspects, obviously linked to like the method I use for generating my sound, the terms in which I uh, define uh, what kind of uh, structural approach I take to my music. And on the other hand, it's all always uh, very important to have uh, at the same time like an aesthetic idea of what this music can eventually do or what the music should convey in the end aesthetically and musically so, so there's always this kind of uh, parallel approach to this to what I do so first of all it's very easy to base my music on technical distinctions because it's obviously relating and relying relating to and relying on uh, a generative method to create sound so it is a means uh, for creating sound by using predetermined fragments of uh, already existing CDs. So this method to create my music has eventually and finally uh, successfully replaced something that formerly could be referred to as creativity. So it has replaced creativity in a sense, which in general, or which altogether makes this a more like very structural approach and a kind of uh, very uh, technical approach to the music. And at the same time, by using this method and using this uh, very technical distinction on uh, uh, which the whole work is based, at the same time, it's equally important what kind of musical result this music uh, in the end uh, should be like, or what it should convey in, in an aesthetic sense, which in it sounds like a contradiction in itself, because obviously using fragments from already existing CDs is a means of uh, ruling out the factor that I'm the person who creates the sound himself. So the sound is not originating anywhere uh, in my kind of equipment, in my kind of setup. It's already existing. The sound fragments from the already existing CDs, other people's CDs, is already like a, a means of ruling out the factor that I am like the author of my own music in the sense of gen generating music. On the other hand, I uh, just uh, shift the focus. I just shift the focus on other aspects of this work, like procedural aspects, aspects of the workflow, aspects of uh, structure, aspects of uh, user interface uh, relation using a user interface technology or uh, complying to or uh, working against uh, certain frames or framework of, of uh, user interface technology. And in that sense, it is uh, in the first place a very technical approach in itself, which is based on a clear technical distinction using re uh, restricting myself on certain elements of using those to create my music and effectively limiting my musical expressive potential in my music to a certain effect of this uh, generative method of this just technical distinction. And on the other hand, I try to like convey in the final result something that is in itself uh, an aesthetic uh, entity or something that convey something in the music in, in an aesthetic sense as well. So there's always like a parallel approach of two possibilities like that, or two paths that could at the same time. So uh, the idea with the process software the concept of the process software is basically a loop-based player 
software that lets you play back and restructure oval samples in quite a detailed uh, way. So basically you start off with the browser on top here. The software features a, a range of samples that can be chosen from a browser and can be pulled down into this uh, work area here in the middle. Each sample can be dragged down from this browser into the mix area and can be moved to the left and right and up and down according to the volume levels and the balance in the stereo field. So when you move a sample right, it moves to the right in the stereo field that is played uh, in here. So each of those samples uh, can be dragged down into the work area and can be, and as soon as it, it is dropped into the work area, it is played. So any of these samples practically runs in a, in a sync. So all the samples played here, playing here, are running more or less in a, some sort of sync. Of course, the uh, basic concept of the user interface design is more a graphic and abstract approach as opposed to uh, having each uh, sample represented by a waveform or a spectrogram. It is, instead of doing that, each sample in each element, graphic element, is, is just uh, represented by an icon or a color-coded uh, graphic element, abstract graphic element. So either you can start off just pulling down samples from the browser and uh, arranging them in this uh, work area and uh, adjust the volume level and the position in the stereo field and then proceed by, for instance, uh, pulling down effects from here, the right. You can pull down these effects to and apply an effect on each of these uh, sound elements active in the mix window. Or you can uh, start off by just hitting one of these preset uh, brackets to the right, uh, to the left, and you just hit the brackets, and you keep hitting the bracket uh, until it presents you with a selection of samples you would like to use. focus when making a concept for music software. So it is an, a work environment in which the user can work according to the distinctions that I make for my own kind of musical approach. But for the first time with this piece of software, for the first time it is actually usable or for the first time it is actually uh, discussable. So it is open for discussion, it's open for consideration, and uh, it's, uh, I see it as a contribution, like my contribution to a kind of discourse that is, I see personally, lacking from uh, electronic music in general, because uh, reception of electronic music or reviews or whatever is always focusing on the musical aspect only, uh, which in itself is uh, a pure convention or it's a pure tradition to do so. Um, and instead, providing, like from my point of view, from a product, the producer's point of view, providing like a, a work environment, a workspace in which the user can configure and reconfigure my music in a sound installation setup, is not by definition superior. It's not a superior thing. It is just a different thing. But it can convey a lot, a lot of aspects, much more concretely and much more precisely than an audio CD, which in itself uh, works and functions in a completely different framework. So effectively, uh, by uh, shifting the focus to user interface design or functionality or software design, whatever you may call it, is in general my way of transferring the concept of uh, how I do music or I uh, consider my own concept of music into something really tangible and really concrete and really uh, existing in the real space.
So these sound objects, they create also, they create like a concrete communication, situation with communication between people. It's not on, only on the internet and it's not sold uh, through a retail channel only. It's not only like multimedia entertainment kind of product, but it's also like installation object where people can meet and they can talk about what they do and they can just discuss a few things and they can just see uh, what overall music is uh, as a sound installation object. Even though the two objects that are existing right now, they're different in, in appearance, and, uh, but the occasion, and the occasion can vary from, from, from each other. So it, there's always a huge range of possibilities in which these objects can be shown, and a huge range of opportunities in which the objects can make uh, a difference, or they can set up uh, a completely different uh, situation of people communicating with each other. But in general, for me, the uh, more decisive uh, aspect in dealing with technology.